AMD has been killing it in the CPU game since they launched their Ryzen processors last year. The 1800X and the rest of them did an amazing job at bringing competition back to the consumer level. A few months later, they released their Threadripper series of chips, which were actually pretty innovative and incredible for their performance and again bring competition back into the more enthusiast kind of high-end level. Now, around a year later, they're back with the Zen Plus version of Threadripper and a few new models as well. The one that you're going to hear all the big tech channels talking about today is the 2990WX. That is the 32 core monster of a chip and it's kind of insane. The only chip I have though is the lowly uh, 2950X which is the replacement for last year's 1950X. Still boasts 16 cores and 32 threads but now with a 4.4 gigahertz boost clock and 3.5 gigahertz base. Now since I didn't get my hands on last year's Threadripper chips nor the the high-end i9s from Intel's range, I can't really do a proper in-depth comparison and so this video is going to be a little bit more, well I guess less traditional. If you're interested in an in-depth comparison with 300 games and benchmarks and applications uh, across you know 400 different CPUs then go check out Anantec's review, they do a fantastic job and Ian Cutress is incredibly detailed when it comes to benchmarking these sorts of chips so if you want that sort of intricate comparative detail then go check that out but if you're interested in finding out what this chip actually has to offer especially in the more real world and you know who would want it why you might even consider picking this up and if I'd be interested in one myself then this video is for you. First we need to answer why you'd want this besides bragging rights. If you just want a game this isn't for you. It'll game just fine and we'll show you that in a second but if you are solely gaming then go pick up a 26 or 2700X or an 80 or an 8700K because those are the chips for you. This, this is for content creators, this is for programmers, this is for AI and deep learning and for people who want to do all of those things all at the same time. This is an incredible bit of kit with an actually really impressive price tag to go with it at $899. Of course, when you compare that to your standard you know, 2700X at the sort of $350 price point, that seems like a very expensive chip, but when you compare it to anything even close in terms of performance, this looks like an incredible value. Intel's 7900X, which is a 10 core, not 16, uh, is actually $100 more at just shy of $1,000 rather than just shy of $900, making this just an incredible value for money. It still has 64 PCIe lanes and four of which still go to the chipset, meaning you have 60 available lanes to play with. That means that if you, you know, want to have a, a GPU for your Linux host operating system for some native gaming and rendering, you want a second GPU for your SRI, IOV, IOMMU pass-through looking glass Windows VM just for gaming, then that's all good. And you want to throw in two 10 gigabit Ethernet cards and four N.2 SSDs in RAID 5, then you still have lanes to spare. This is a content creator and especially, uh, you know, someone who can make use of multiple graphics cards and things like that, and especially anyone who just wants to use a lot of virtual machines, this is a dream come true. The stock cooler, which is nicknamed the Wraith Ripper as part of their kind of Wraith lineup, uh, is actually made by Cooler Master. It is essentially a dual tower air heatsink with a full cover block and a fan built into the middle with a sort of RGB shroud on top. It's actually a completely completely sold separately thing. There are no coolers that come in the box with a Threadripper. When you get a Threadripper, this is actually all you get. But the, I suppose, stock cooler, the Wraith Ripper, is actually an incredibly impressive cooler. It keeps the 2950X perfectly cool. I think at maximum I saw was 71 degrees Celsius. And while I wasn't doing synthetic Prime 95 loads or anything, this was kind of real world things. Even with stuff like Cinebench running, which does provide 100% load, uh, it was still, as I said, that 70 one maximum and still fairly quiet. It's not silent, but it's still pretty impressive. You can pick up an AIO like this one, which is an Enermax Liquitec 240 TR4. It is specifically designed for the, the socket and for Threadripper to be a full cover block. And while this will perform a little bit better than that, it will likely be a bit cooler. Uh, you don't necessarily need this. And even with the full cover block, while you don't need it, and you could go with a standard, you know, H100i Pro or whatever, uh, it does benefit 
it a little bit just because of how large these chips physically are. So let's talk about the bit you've all been waiting for, which is the performance. Starting off with a few synthetic results, uh, Cinebench is a pretty decent benchmark and easy to compare between. So starting with the multi-thread, that's 3,111 points, which is incredibly impressive. And on the single-threaded side, you've got 176 points. That means that on the multi-threaded side, there really isn't many chips that can beat this and certainly nothing anywhere near this price range. But on the single-threaded side, you're getting basically 2600X, 8600K levels of performance, which for a 16-core processor is, again, just very impressive. In terms of 3D Mark Fire Strikes physics score, this was sitting at 27,400 points, give or take a couple, but that's incredibly impressive as well, especially when you look at the, again, price comparator 7900X as being, I think, about in like 23,000 points, so a pretty big difference and a fair lead, especially when it comes to price. Moving to more real-world testing, I threw on the Blender BMW render. This is quite a common one, so you can look up other performance results to, to compare if you fancy, but long story short, the BMW render on the CPU only took 2 minutes and 35 seconds. To compare that to some other results I've found for the other chips, the 7980XE apparently took a little bit longer, took around about 3 minutes, which means that this chip, at least in theory anyway, likely thanks to its higher overall base and boost clocks, means that it's actually a, a bit faster, at least in this specific task. An Adobe Premiere Pro rendering a 4K 30fps, 30 megabytes per second file, which is a actually the Ryzen second generation unboxing video, which which while normally has After Effects elements in it, those were removed for the sake of just you know comparative testing. Um, so with that, the Threadripper chip, the, the 2950X, was running uh, an eight minute and 22 second render with a uh, with the GPU, it was around about five minutes, but to compare that to the Ryzen 1700 that I use for most of my rendering, at least initial rendering, that one took, uh, I believe, 14 minutes and uh, 29 seconds, so a good, a bit longer, almost double, uh, and obviously, you know, there's slightly different clock speeds and stuff like that, but it's still an impressive, impressive render. And finally, in gaming, I had a bit of an issue with GTA 5 where I just couldn't get it to run as well as I expected it to. Many of the, you know, kind of lower core chips were running fine, and I don't know whether this is a bug with GTA, the graphics card, the chip itself, or anything else, but um, I was running at 152 FPS on very high settings at 1080p with a GTA 1080 Ti. In terms of PlayerUnknown's Battlegrounds and Fortnite though, those ran ex exceptionally well with everything on maximum settings with you know ultra or epic settings depending on which game you're looking at. Again, still at 1080p but looking at 143 FPS average and 170 again with that 1080, uh, 1080 Ti which actually is pretty impressive for those games. So as I said, this isn't a gaming chip. It will game fine but it's never going to match an 8700K or even a 2700X but if if you're just gaming, you know, to pass the time while you're rendering a, a big high poly 3D model or if you're, you know, rendering out a video in the background or especially if you even just want to be able to, to edit a film while you're, you know, rendering a different film or whatever else or YouTube videos or whatever, uh, this chip can handle that all just fine. This is, you know, for content creators, it's for people who want to massively multitask, it's for programmers and, you know, AI and deep learning development and stuff like that and really anyone who can make use of a whole load of cores. At $899 pounds, euros and similar pricing around the world, this is an incredible value. I know that I've said that already, but it just really is kind of shocking how great value this is, especially when you compare it to the competition. Now, of course, Intel are yet to launch any updated, you know, kind of X299 uh, kind of CPUs, although with their issues with their 10 nanometer process and Ryzen already being down at 12, I can see this being a bit of an interesting couple of years where we may see Ryzen and the, the you know, kind of AMD in general getting some significant mar market share numbers while Intel isn't really pushing too much forward. I will be looking forward to seeing what Intel's Z390 chipset has to offer and especially if they're bringing even higher core counts to the desktop, but in terms of their enterprise or I guess enthusiast grade stuff, this is just currently unbeatable. Now to answer the question that I put in all of these videos, would I put this in my rig? 
Hell yeah. Of course, this isn't a gaming chip, so uh, my FPS would suffer a little bit compared to my 1700X that's overclocked to 3.8 gigahertz, but honestly, am I okay losing 5, 10 FPS here or there on my 1440p monitor that I have G-Sync on anyway, and it's 144 hertz, and I can just turn down a few settings while I'm also rendering and, you know, 3D modeling and, I don't know, cooking lighting for game development all at the same time? No, I really don't care about losing a couple FPS. This is an incredible chip. This is almost exactly designed for people like me. And for people like me who are out there, I cannot recommend this enough. So with all of that said, those are my thoughts. I would love to hear yours in the comments down below. Is this a chip for you? Is this kind of way too out of your budget and you'll never be able to afford this? Or is this something you're aspiring to if you're a content creator and you're excited to try and get your hands on one? Let me know in the comments down below. Otherwise, if you would like this CPU, then you can take a look at the top link in the description down below. That will take you to your local Amazon store where you can either buy it or just check out pricing when and where you watch this as it does change. If you want to check out some more videos on Threadripper, then I will do my best to get them out. This is going to be a launch video, so there won't be any yet, but make sure you're subscribed with notifications on for future videos. Of course, there are plenty of other ones over there that you can check out. Of course, you can check out the Ryzen 2 videos as well. If you want to support the channel and keep me making these videos on a Monday, Wednesday, and Friday basis with live streams on Thursday evenings, then take a look at the links in the description. There's a Patreon link where you can support me directly, or Amazon and Overclock UK affiliate links links would also massively help me out when you buy stuff using those links. It doesn't cost you anything, just helps me out. There's also plenty of other stuff including merch where you can pick up t-shirts like this one or a few other cool designs so take a look at that. Otherwise, as I said, check out the other videos over here. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments down below and otherwise thank you for watching and we'll see you all in the next video.